How's it going everyone? My name is Mr. Boss for the win and welcome to Firing Range 2020, I mean studio, uh, on this episode of Black Ops 2. Anyways, yeah, we are playing on the updated version of Firing Range and I can tell you this is going to be my favorite map of the Uprising DLC. Now, I know a few days ago I was kind of putting a poo-poo on the Uprising DLC. I was very disappointed and oh, I was so close to getting all three of these guys right here and I failed miserably. Anyways, this is a really quick game. Hopefully you guys can enjoy but anyways, yeah, I, I was kind of poo-pooing on it because there wasn't a, a weapon or a score streak or anything that was involved. But the maps on this DLC are of the almost highest quality I've ever played. I can't... I love all of them. Obviously, Firing Range 2025 Studio is amazing. Vertigo is a great map. I played it. It's like high-rise. It's awesome. It's got this like center building and this ring around it. And then uh, Encore, the map with the... Uh, with like the Rockstar stage in the center. That is a fun map. And uh, Magma is also a really cool map. You gotta watch out for the lava though because like one time it was sneaking up on me and I was like, oh my God, I didn't see this happening. So uh, a really cool experience. Uh, I really enjoy all the maps. Uh, they've got great color, obviously, as you can see. Uh, firing range is just like firing range but with a different uh, you know, color palette really. And then all the other maps look really nice as well. Uh, I'll give my full review in, in, in another day though, but uh, I just want to say, you know, how impressed I am with uh, the fact that Treyarch has actually listened to the community and fact that they wanted Firing Range back. I thought we were going to get Firing Range 2025, but they come out with Studio, which is a very similar concept. The only issue I've seemed to run into are these bright green walls that you see right here. Now, I always get really distracted by these bright green walls. It's like that purple room in Nuketown 2025. For whatever reason, I cannot stop staring at these walls every time I look by it, and sometimes it gets me killed, and I think that's why I didn't get that three-piece in the beginning. You know, I'm focused on all these colors right now, like these bright red walls, and uh, that's going to take some time to getting used to because uh, I definitely know that, um, you know, even though it is firing range, there are a lot of different things that you have to deal with as I run out of ammo right here, like uh, target finders, EMP grenades, all different sorts of things that you wouldn't see in the first firing range that you now have to deal with in this game. So... Uh, some really cool changes, but uh, nevertheless, I still am uh, really excited. So uh, this is the first time, obviously, this is my very first game on the map um, studio, and it felt like home, honestly, just because I played so many games of uh, Firing Range on Black Ops. And uh, I skipped a few deaths right here. I die a few times in a row, and there's a dragon fire in the air. And uh, I can say I put the team on my back because we are down 45 to 53 at this point in time right now. And about right now, I go on a little bit of a banana tear, to quote the great Swedish Tabe. I go on one of those right now, and I don't get like five man feeds and stuff like that, but um, you know, I definitely uh, you know, get a consecutive kills in a row right here. And how I did not kill this guy blows my mind. You can see I try to push the C4, and when the C4 doesn't come out, that is when you retreat and run because I have run out of options, I don't have any more grenades. And uh, that guy was in a better position to uh, beat me in a gunfight. So, quick tip right there. That's what I did. And I decided I'm going to call in this Hellstorm missile, but I forget that I am not playing Modern Warfare 2 and decide to v use it via Predator missile style. And I kill Mr. Sergeant Shack right here. And this is when things start going crazy. I mean, not to say that my teammates were bad or that they weren't doing a good job, but, um, you know, we all really picked it up right here, and I feel like I was leading the charge. Uh, I get really lucky right here that I'm able to pick up that guy without his uh, friend killing me. And uh, he wanders upstairs, and I'm able to uh, pick him off in a little bit. So yeah, guys, I'm very excited for this Uprising DLC. I actually, obviously, the video I played uh, before this is Mob of the Dead with Thunder. It's our first run we've ever done. We're complete noobs. I'll put an annotation on the screen right now. You can click on that. Go watch it. I think it's funny. We just have banter back and forth about what we're doing in Mob of the Dead. And I think later on this afternoon, I'm going to be doing a live session with Thunder, uh, Loyal Patriot, and Cinematic. So go look out for that. Might be on Thunder's channel. Might be on mine. Might be on both. Who really knows? It's going to be a good time, though. Uh, that is definitely all I can tell you because I'm so excited. Uh, they put a lot of detail into Mob of the Dead. They put a lot of detail into all these maps. I'm very excited for uh, the opportunity. And this is this giddy feeling I get. It's that, you know, new map Call of Duty feeling. It's something undescribable. It's like getting Call of Duty for the first time. And that's why I love DLC so much. So uh, I preach why I love DLCs, and they have a special place in my heart because they keep the game fresh. Very interesting and very exciting. 28-9, very quick. You see I lead the team, and uh, we get the victory right here. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Stick around for more videos tomorrow for Uprising. And, of course, I will see you guys in the next video.